Do your students ever ask you about the other pedals? You know those questions. Hey, can I press on this one? What does this one do? Which pedal? This pedal? When you're asking for the pedal, by which we always mean the right one, right? <laughs> but why is that? It's because it's used in more repertoire, sure. But with students in the beginning, they're curious. They want to know all the things that the piano does. And if we go years and years and years, maybe even beyond a decade before touching the other two pedals, our curiosity may get squashed to the back of our brain and we may stop caring about it. But actually, these are two really cool effects that the piano has. Now, I'm going to start with the una corda pedal and how we can teach that and how we can use it with younger students, beginner students, students at any level. I'm starting with the una corda mostly because it exists on all pianos and then we'll talk about the sostenuto later. So the una corda, in case you need a brief <laughs> idea of this. It's the pedal on the left and on a grand piano obviously it's named after that. It's one string so the, the hammers shift ever so slightly but on an upright piano the hammers just move in. So the first thing I would say is if you do have a grand piano and you can put the lid up and show them what happens when you press the unicorda pedal. If you have an upright piano maybe once a year take off the cover. I call this naked piano week and so you can show them what the unicorda pedal does there. But if you have a hybrid or something like I teach on now, well, that's not going to work for you. So how do we explain the una corda pedal? It's often called the soft pedal, but I don't like that term. I don't like that explanation because what tends to happen, and this may have happened to you with your students, is that you say it's a soft pedal. And so they put it down and they play a note really <laughs> loud and they say it's not doing anything. Because it's not forcing you to play soft. That's not really what it does, does it? It gives us a different effect. So I like to describe it as a different kind of soft or a slightly muffled or just different quality of sound. Now, what's really hard to find are pieces that teach these skills at that beginner level. So that's actually what we put together our latest concept collection all about. If you're not familiar with our concept collections from Vibrant Music, these are exclusive collections that we put together where we invite four or five composers to compose a piece specifically about one concept that we think needs to be taught, needs to have more repertoire at those earlier levels. So they're beginner to intermediate pieces. And our latest concept collection is called the other pedals and with some fantastic composers. So let me show you how they incorporate una corda into their pieces. There are loads of wonderful pieces in these collections, but the one that I think would be great to start with in terms of teaching the una corda would be Nimbus. This is by Brock Chart and it's actually the first piece in our book because it's very accessible and I think it could be taught by rote. The una corda doesn't come in till the end and it just stays down for the rest of the piece. So it's a very simple execution of the una corda. The beginning does have pedal. And the reason I think it could be taught by rote is it's highly patterned. So you can teach it by rote or from the score. So it goes on like that. And then on the second page, we have this bit where Brock instructs us to go at our own pace. So we've got a ritardando uh, for Mata and then we come out of that at our own pace with this little. And that's when the una corda comes down. It's actually after a double bar line as well. So it's very distinct section. Great way to start with this pedal. So I love that piece as a starting point for the una corda because I just think it's such a simple piece but it's really, it's really beautiful and it really gives students an opportunity to experience that different in the quality of the sound because the start is the same as that section with the una corda down but it has a different quality of sound. It's even instructed the same in the dynamic. It's, it says mezzo piano both. So I really like that because it gives them the contrast. You really have to listen for it. You really have to engage your ears for that. There's also a few, but not too many pedal changes, like changes of the 
regular pedal during that una corda section. So they get to practice that skill of having their left foot down and changing their right foot, but it's not too difficult that they definitely can conquer it. Now let's talk about the sostenuto pedal. So this is the middle piano pedal on a grand piano or a digital piano that's imitating a grand, which most will be. The middle pedal on a upright piano either doesn't exist, so make sure your students know it's not unusual if their piano at home doesn't have one, or if it's a practice pedal, which is like that where the felt comes down and it's really, really muffled and sounds like it's underwater. <laughs> So that's what my piano downstairs does. If that's what their pedal does, they can't practice that at home. But if they do have something with a sostenuto pedal or they can at least try it at the studio, I think this is a really fun one to explore. And it's definitely one where it's almost impossible to find examples where students can use it, especially at like a beginner, intermediate, even late intermediate, early advanced. We're looking at advanced repertoire only for the most part. So that's why I love that we've been able to bring you these pieces that really explore the sostenuto pedal and allow students to try it out for themselves. So I'm gonna show you one of the pieces that uses the sostenuto that I think again is a great introduction to it. This piece is by Susan Staples Bell and it is wonderful because it's just such an accessible start with the sostenuto. Susan actually designed this differently than the other composers, which I really like for this beginner piece. So in most of the pieces, we stuck with the same kind of look of the sostenuto on, on the page. The way we've chosen to put it in the notation is the same, just to make it that much easier for students, because there is a lot of variety out there, because there's really no one convention for sostenuto, but this is one of the most common, so we stuck with that. However, with Susan's, we did use the same notation but we've actually shifted it slightly because she wanted it to be really clear that the student had a whole beat to put down the sostenuto pedal, that they were doing one thing basically on every beat of the bar. So that's why this one is excellent introduction piece for the sostenuto. So in this, she instructs you to put down the bass C and that's beat one. And then the sostenuto is beat two. So that's what it lines up with. And this is forte, so we sostenuto and then three four left hand is going over that's how she's using the sostenuto one two three four and then we've got a new note in the left hand and we're lifting the sostenuto so that's kind of two things together one and up and then down on two three four one two so this is a really, really fun piece. Now I would definitely recommend demonstrating the whole thing to your student, making sure that they can hear how cool it's gonna sound when they can do it a bit faster, because in the beginning it is gonna to need to be that slow just till they get used to it, like with learning to pedal anyway. And then once they can And then once they can go it a bit faster. it's gonna sound much more bouncy and like jumping jacks. So those are just a couple of pieces from our new concept collection. And I hope it gives you an idea of how you can first introduce a sostenuto pedal or an unicorda pedal. Now our concept collections are only live for two months at a time, okay? So they are inside the Vibrant Music Teaching Library. If you're a member or you wanna sign up to be a member, you can get a studio license, a digital studio license there or you can go to the link below to purchase hard copies. You don't have to be a member to do that. So I'll leave all the details in the description. However, if you're watching this after the two months have elapsed, so after May, 2023, from June, 2023 on, this will not be available, but you can absolutely still go to the composer's websites and maybe they will have listed these pieces themselves. They're free to do that after the collection has been disbanded. So I will leave all their details below as well. I hope you enjoyed this exploration of the other pedals and I'll see you soon.